A new report shows the FBI has made many errors in applying for so-called FISA applications, in some cases gaining access to Americans' private information. Let's bring in J Chief Judicial Analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, always great to see you. I'm a little baffled here, and I'm sure you can clear this up for me, because the report goes on to say that the top U.S. court that oversees national security surveillance found the FBI regularly does not follow rules meant to protect the privacy of Americans, and yet the warrantless surveillance gets renewed. How is that possible? Well, good, good morning, Trace. It's always a pleasure to be with you, my dear friend. R remember, there are 17 governmental agencies that make applications before the FISA court for warrantless surveillance. The FBI is only one of them. But the FBI has been in the court's crosshairs, so to speak, because of its catastrophic blunders, probably motivated by politics, although the FBI denies it, uh, in its efforts to use the FISA court to get surveillance over the Trump campaign and over the Trump administration. From and after that time point, we're talking about November or the fall of November 16 and into the Trump presidency in 2017. The FISA court reviews the procedures of those who make applications before it. This most recent review said, oh, the procedures are fine on paper, but you guys are still not complying with those procedures. Example, in one instance, the FBI hacked into, hacked into mm -hmm. the emails of 16,000 Americans, and it found actionable intelligence in only seven of them. The court blasted the FBI for that, but still lets them do it. So yep. of what value is this court if it knows that the applications before it are defective and the people coming before it are breaking the laws they've sworn to uphold, and it lets them continue to do so? Yeah, it's frustrating for a lot of people, I'm sure, Judge. I just want to move on to subject number two here, because this also is one of those things that's going to go on and on and on and on. Wall Street Journal is saying that, uh, talking about the election, that if it comes down to it, I mean, they're quoting here, if the presidential election is decided by a whisker, with Donald Trump or Joe Biden leading by some thousands of votes in a few states, a court ruling could prove decisive. The pivotal jurisdictions will be flooded with Republican and Democratic lawyers, and the resulting chaos could resemble the 2000 Florida re count with smudged postmarks as the new hanging chads. We could be here in December, Judge, still wondering who in the world the next president's going to be. So the, the Wall Street Journal's point is this, and, and I think it's a valid one. Remember, there is no one election for president. There are 52 elections. I'm counting uh, Puerto Rico and the District of uh, Columbia. And, and each of those jurisdictions run their own elections. Some of those jurisdictions let you mail in a ballot. Are you ready for this? As late as November 2nd. That's Monday. That's the day before Election Day. So it's supposed to arrive before Election Day. The Constitution says there's only one day for an election. You can't vote after the election. So that's yep. going to be the dispute. When was this mailed and when did it arrive? <laughs> when the states wrote these laws, they gave the voters way too much time in which to cast those ballots. That's the essence yep. of the Wall Street Journal's uh, complaint. And, and, and I want to just put this up in the screen because to your point, and maybe even one better here, this is for 2020, the primaries, 558,000 absentee ballots were rejected. In the 2016 general election, 380 18 plus thousand absentee ballots were rejected. Your final thoughts on this, Judge? My final thoughts are in 2016, 40 million people voted by mail. In 2020, 80 million people will vote by, ma by mail. So take those problems and multiply them at least by two. Yeah, and let's I get very quickly. They're giving me some time to put this up here because you talked about this, Judge. Just so that for the context of our audience, voters in 10 states can request absentee ballots on November 2nd, one day before the election. And a little point of note here at the bottom, April through June, 1.6 million pieces of election mail were delivered late. Judge, I'll give you one final, final thought. We, we have to be wary about this. And if the states are interested in secure elections, they will change their rules, get ballots into people's hands, and tell them the ballots have to be in by 10 days before Election Day. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to count them.
Judge, great to see you. Thank you, sir.